Meet me at Anchor Way and Commodore Road. At one time or another, most of us have identified a location in this way by referring to the intersection of two streets. Or we have said, I live between Commodore Road and Galley Boulevard at 310 Anchor Way, and thus precisely located the house. In a city with clearly identified streets, this method of giving a location works well. The streets and street numbers are easily recognized points of reference by means of which exact locations can be described. But how do you accurately describe locations in a foreign land or in a non-populated rural area? No street signs here, not even streets. Yet if a soldier is to function properly, he must be able to find his way efficiently from one position to another anywhere in the world. And to accomplish this, he must have some means of identifying the location of objects or points of reference on the ground in a uniform and precise manner. These men, for example, are in an area previously unknown to them. They have just completed a reconnaissance mission which has brought them to this location. Now they must rejoin their patrol along a road several thousand meters distant at a designated but unmarked point. Without prior knowledge of the area, how can these men find their way precisely and efficiently to a destination they can neither see nor identify? The military map provides the answer, but the men must be able to utilize the information it contains. As you know, a map is a drawing to scale of a portion of the Earth's surface on which natural and man-made features are depicted by symbols, lines, and colors. In addition, a military map is a topographic map which shows both relief and the horizontal position of all features in measurable form. Thus it presents a precise, detailed, and accurate picture of the area it covers. If the military map is to be really efficient, however, it must include some practical means of locating points at any place on the map or on the ground. Thus, medium or large-scale military maps like this standard 1 to 50,000 scale map, are overprinted with an orderly system of lines called a military grid. Because of its relative simplicity, the Army uses this grid system for the expression of location. A grid system consists of two sets of parallel lines intersecting at right angles and forming a series of squares which are equal in size. The lines running horizontally head approximately east and west, while the vertical lines run north and south. It is obvious that this system of squares will enable one to locate a point by stating within which square the point lies. So for purposes of identification, each line is numbered along the edge of the map as well as within the map itself. Like a well-marked city street, each line is clearly marked and can be used in locating any grid square which borders it. You may have noticed that the line numbers printed at the edge of the map contain small figures not found in connection with those printed within the map itself. These small figures are included primarily to relate this map to others of adjacent areas. When using the military grid system to locate a position on the map, they should be ignored. Use only the large numbers, which are called principal digits. Forget all others. Keeping this precaution in mind, let us see how the grid system is used to locate a position on the map. As an example, a farmhouse is situated here. How would the area or grid squares within which it is located be designated? By what are called coordinates, made up of numbers derived from the grid lines adjacent to the square. 
Coordinates are written as one number, but always contain an even number of digits. On the military map, the first half of these digits is always read to the right. The second half of the coordinates is always read up from the bottom. This is the first and most important thing to remember in using the military grid. Always read right and, and then up. Or it may be easier to remember read right up whenever interpreting grid coordinates. Now let us see how this rule applies in pinpointing the farmhouse. Starting at the left edge of the map and reading to the right until we arrive at the first grid line which borders the square with the farmhouse, this is grid line 05. These become the first two digits of the coordinates which will identify this grid square. Again, starting at the lower edge of the map, read up, arriving at the grid line bordering the lower edge of the square. This is line 64. These digits complete the coordinates which identify this grid square as 0, 05, 6, 4, lying to the right and up from the point where the grid lines 0, 05 and 6, 4 cross. The other grid squares are identified in the same manner. Read right and up to find the proper designation. For military operations or reporting purposes, however, grid square identification is not precise enough. On most military maps, the space between the grid lines, known as the grid interval, is 1,000 meters. The grid square represents an area large enough to accommodate many features in addition to the farmhouse we wish to pinpoint. So a more exact position is necessary. To accomplish this, the grid sides are divided into tenths, either by I or by means of a coordinate scale. When this has been done, we can see that the farmhouse lies seven-tenths to the right of line 0, 05 and eight-tenths of a square up from line 6, 4. These fractional indicators are integrated into the grid square number by keeping in mind that the first half of its digits are read to the right. Thus, the first half of the coordinates now becomes 0, 05 plus the number of tenths seven and the second half reading up becomes six four plus the number of tenths eight the final number zero five seven six four eight represents coordinates which locate the farmhouse to within one hundred meters This is how the grid system enables you to describe or find the location of features at any point on the military map accurately, clearly, and easily if you will remember to read right up. To aid you in using the grid system, every military map carries instructions describing the method we have just seen demonstrated. These are found here in what is called the grid reference box. The grid reference box is divided into two parts. The left portion contains information identifying the map and the area it covers. At the bottom, it carries a reminder to ignore the smaller figures in any printed grid number and use only the large figures in plotting locations on the map. The right part of the box explains how to use the grid in giving or locating a standard reference on the map with an example of the method we have just observed keyed to a point on the map. In brief, the grid reference box contains the operating instructions for the military grid system. By consulting it, you will be able to use the grid successfully when you find yourself in a situation like this. As you remember, these men have just completed a reconnaissance mission through an area they have not known previously. 
Now they must rejoin their patrol at a point some distance away, identified only by this number we now recognize as grid coordinates. How will they do this? We know that grid coordinates are written to be read right up, and that the first half of the digits is read to the right. Using these coordinates, the men will begin at the lower left-hand corner of the map and read right until they reach line 1-6, which is indicated by the first two digits of the coordinates. The third digit tells them that the location they are looking for is one-tenth of a grid square to the right of line 1-6, so a tick mark will be made at that point, and the next step is to read up. The following two digits direct the readers to move up to line 6-4. This one. The final digit indicates that the location is six-tenths of a grid square up from this line. This is marked off and the men locate the point of rendezvous designated by the coordinates 161-646. As you can see, by properly using the coordinates and the military grid, the rendezvous point has been located efficiently, clearly, and precisely and its relationship to the present position of the map readers has been accurately plotted. With this essential information available, the men can now plan the route they will follow to rejoin their squad at the designated location. Between any two points on the map, there are usually several possible routes, and in selecting the most suitable, relative distance should be among the first considerations. With a military map, the determination of ground distance between two points is a simple matter thanks to the graphic or bar scales which are printed on each map. These are in effect rulers by means of which distances on the map may be measured as actual ground distances in terms of statute miles, meters, yards, or nautical miles. Their use is easily understood. For example, this is how you determine the straight line ground distance between two points on the map. Lay a straight edged piece of paper on the map so that its edge touches both points. Make a tick mark on the edge of the paper at each point. Then move the paper down to the appropriate graphic scale and read the ground distance between the two points. The graphic scale is divided into two sections. That to the right of the zero is called the primary scale and is marked with full units of measure. From this primary scale, we see that the straight line ground distance is more than 3,000 meters. How much more can be read to the left of the zero on what is called the extension scale? This is divided into tenths of a unit and in this instance shows the total distance to be 800 meters more than the 3,000 on the primary scale, or a total of 3,800 meters. As you know, a map is a drawing to scale of a portion of the Earth's surface on which natural and man-made features are depicted by symbols, lines, and colors. A grid system consists of two sets of parallel lines intersecting at right angles and forming a series of squares which are equal in size.
A grid system consists of two sets of parallel lines intersecting at right angles and forming a series of squares which are equal in size. For military operations or reporting purposes, however, grid square identification is not precise enough. On most military maps, the space between the grid lines, known as the grid interval, is 1,000 meters. On most military maps, the space between the grid lines, known as the grid interval, is 1,000 meters. You may have noticed that the line numbers printed at the edge of the map contain small figures not found in connection with those printed within the map itself. These small figures are included primarily to relate this map to others of adjacent areas. When using the military grid system to locate a position on the map, they should be ignored. At the bottom, it carries a reminder to ignore the smaller figures in any printed grid number and use only the large figures in plotting locations on the map. The right part of the box explains how to use the grid in giving or locating a standard reference on the map with an example of the method we have just observed keyed to a point on the map. As you can see, by properly using the coordinates on the military grid, the rendezvous point has been located efficiently, clearly, and precisely. And its relationship to the present position of the map readers has been accurately plotted. For example, this is how you determine the straight line ground distance between two points on the map. Lay a straight-edged piece of paper on the map so that its edge touches both points. Make a tick mark on the edge of the paper at each point. Then move the paper down to the appropriate graphic scale and read the ground distance between the two points. The graphic scale is divided into two sections. That to the right of the zero is called the primary scale and is marked with full units of measure. From this primary scale, we see that the straight line ground distance is more than 3,000 meters. How much more can be read to the left of the zero on what is called the extension scale? This is divided into tenths of a unit, and in this instance shows the total distance to be 800 meters more than the 3,000 on the primary scale, 
or a total of 3,800 meters. 